matchless name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So this evening, once again, God has given us one more opportunity to gather together in the presence of God to study from the book of Revelation. And uh, I thank God for all the benefits and all the provision and protection that God has given for every one of us, every family in the previous days. And we have been praying for all our friends and we have been praying for our relatives and uh, maybe parents and our uh, family members, those who are affected by uh, the COVID-19 and other uh, health issues. So God is doing the miracles in our families and uh, let us thank God for everything that God is doing for us. Amen. So this evening, I was just thinking, you know, after maybe after two weeks, we are gathering together once again for the book of Revelation, of the, the study of the book of Revelation, right? You know, uh, one week uh, we were not here and uh, the previous week, actually, uh, we had the Church of God um, state meeting so that uh, we canceled uh, our uh, fasting prayer or Bible study. So it is after two weeks, we are gathering together again for this uh, study of the Bible, I mean, uh, of the Revelation. So I believe that you just remember all those portions that we already discussed in the previous classes. And uh, as we are gathering together again, uh, let us turn our attention to Book of Revelation. And uh, before that, I would request, uh, I would request uh, uh, Amy George to uh, summarize uh, the previous portions now. Then after that, we will uh, continue uh, chapter six. So we uh, read in Revelation chapter six to 19, John watched like how God is going to judge and punish the world. In Revelation 6 to 21, it mentions that there are seven seals, seven trumpets, and seven bowls. And um, seven seals and figures, which is mentioned in Revelation chapter 6, 1 to 17, and Revelation 8, 1 to 5. First seal denotes white horse, uh, cold, and that denotes cold war. Um, and second seal, um, red horse, and it denotes hot war. Third seal is black horse, which denotes famine. Fourth seal is pale horse, which is the, uh, which shows that death will come by war, starvation, and wild beast. Fifth seal, when it will be open, cry of martyred will be there. Sixth seal uh, will bring earthquake, cosmic changes, cry and prayer of earth dwellers. Seventh seal will at that time, there would be silence in heaven for about half an hour. Then we learned about three Christian views on great tribulations. First one was pre-tribulation, which says that rapture of the church will happen before the great tribulation. Mid-tribulation says rapture of the church will happen in the middle of the great tribulation. Post-tribulation, which says that rapture of church will happen after the great tribulation. Three types of judgment in tribulations is seal judgment, trumpet judgment, and bowl judgment. And in 1 Thessalonians 5, 9, it says God's people will not go through tribulation, which uh, so we believe in pre-tribulation. Other names of great tribulation are the day of the Lord. Second one is the trouble or tribulation, the time or great day of trouble, the time of Jacob's trouble. The Old Testament prophecies on tribulation period are in Daniel 9, 24 to 27, in which verse 2 mentions writings of prophet Jeremiah about the destruction of Jerusalem. In verse 3, it mentions about Daniel's prayer. In verse 21, it says answer for his prayer. In verse 22 to 27, cleansing process of Israel would be for 490 years. Uh, that is 77 for the complete restoration. So Israel's captivity was for 70 years, but their cleansing was for 490 years. Uh, 70 weeks for Israel. Um, it is mentioned in Daniel chapter 9, 24 about uh, the nation of Israel. Six things to bring back, bring them back is to finish the transgressions. That means this to stop the transgressions of Israel, a great revival, to put an end to the sin, that is a seal, to seal their sins and put an end to their sin, to atone for their wickedness, to make reconciliation for that in iniquity, 
uh, that is through because they had rejected Jesus to bring an everlasting righteousness to show that God is righteous forever to seal up vision and prophecy. Then in Daniel chapter uh, 9, 25 to 26, Messiah will be cut off after seven sevens and 62 sevens were mentioned um, in the Bible. So that came about to 483 years and the remaining years was for the great tribulation. And in Daniel chapter 9, 27, it mentions seven year of tribulation period. In Matthew chapter 24, 15, it mentions about, about abomination that causes desolation. And in Revelation chapter 13, verse 1, we read about the beast. In Daniel chapter 9, 27, we read about peaceful covenant that, that uh, he, the Antichrist will break in the middle of the seven years, that is three and a half years. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Amy, for uh, explaining all those things and summarizing all those things. And uh, may God bless you. And, uh, you know, as I was preparing the uh, notes for today, I was just thinking one thing that, you know, our focus and our intention behind studying the book of Revelation is not just to get some knowledge or uh, some, some of the stuff from the book of Revelation and uh, saying that, okay, I know this thing and I know that thing, and I know something about the book of Revelation. No, it's not, it's not the focus of our life, gathering together in the Bible study. But uh, my uh, focus is to, to tell you that and to remind you that we must be ready for the second coming of Jesus Christ. And we must be get away from all the, uh, all the worldly things and we have to be surrendered in the presence of God. We have to be prepared enough to uh, uh, re uh, prepared enough for the return of Jesus Christ. Okay, so that should be our motive and that should be our intention when we are studying <clears throat> the book of Revelation because the book of Revelation is very serious. It's not easy to understand. While uh, Emmy was reading those portions and uh, summarizing those portions, I was thinking it is not uh, easy to obey. It is not easy to understand also. But we are uh, trying to get all these things uh, very easily and uh, by knowing all those things, we should be ready for the second coming of Jesus and we should be ready and prepared enough to enough for the return of Jesus Christ. I mean, so let us pray for that and let us pray for all our family members to be saved and let us pray for all our friends and uh, uh, relatives to come to Christ in the coming days also. And, uh, you know, as we were uh, uh, listening from uh, uh, Sister Amy George about the summarizing of that portions uh, in the previous classes uh, we have been discussing about the different aspects of uh, uh, seven years of great tribulation and it was based on chapter six you know when you study about the great tribulation and and <clears throat> very very particularly think about What will be our destination in the uh, maybe a uh, chapter six verse? In Pastor Sound Sharika to Ernilla. Sound Sharika to Ernilla. It's okay now? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Praise God. Okay, so uh, in, in Revelation chapter 6, verses 1 through 17, and uh, chapter 8, verses 1 through 5, that portion gives us a clear explanation about uh, breaking the seven seals of the scroll. So we already discussed about the seven uh, uh, seals and, uh, uh, sorry, uh, the seven, the, the scroll and the seven seals and everything. But here we get a clear explanation about how Jesus, the Lamb of God, was breaking the seven seals and what are the things uh, happening uh, when the scroll and the seals were opened or when it was broken. Uh, you know, there are many things happening while Jesus broke each seal. 
And those things are uh, going to happen uh, during the time of the Great Tribulation period. Even uh, those the, those days will be a terrible things, a ter terrible things, and ter terrible events are going to happen. You know that represents the great punishment of God on the unbelieving world and the nations. So during the time of the Great Tribulation, uh, God's punishment and God's judgment will come upon the worldly people. That means the believers, those who those who have accepted Jesus as their personal savior and living and leading a holy life, those people will be caught up with Christ in heaven. We will be with Christ. Uh, we won't be here. At the same time, the worldly people, uh, those, the people, those who were not able to accept Jesus and those who rejected Jesus and they were, uh, they are known as the uh, unbelievers. Uh, those people will be, will be here on this earth. And God's punishment and God's judgment is coming upon those people. The, the, you can say like uh, unbelieving world and the nations. You know, uh, I already gave an outline of uh, uh, seven seals and the important figures included in each seal in the last class, right? You know, let me let me show that uh, same slide which uh, I already uh, yeah that is the one uh, gave you in the in the last class. You know, don't write it down. Uh, don't, uh, don't write these points because you already wrote it once, but, uh, but just I'm trying to remind you those things, okay? And this is the slide that uh, uh, we have to just go through because uh, uh, it, it says about the first, uh, first seal, the white horse and cold war, and second seal, red horse, third seal, black horse, fourth seal, pale horse, and fifth seal, the cry of the martyr, and the sixth seal, earthquake, cosmic changes and everything, and the seventh seal, silence in heaven for about half an hour. So I know that this is not easy to understand all these portions, but at the same time, just try to understand the common and the plain meaning of uh, uh, each portions, you know, uh, that will help you to, uh, to get inside the, the book of Revelation. Now, now uh, we are going to study in detail about the breaking of seven seals and events which take place during the time of the tribulation period, okay? So as a matter of fact, there are many things to explain uh, from these chapters, uh, uh, maybe uh, chapters six to eight, uh, but I will be uh, taking only the important topics uh, from this portion. There are many things, there are many, many, many topics which is uh, mentioned in uh, these chapters, but we don't have time to go through all those portions, but we are taking only the important uh, uh, messages, important topics from that portion. Now, uh, let us study about uh, breaking the, the first seal, breaking the first seal that is from uh, chapter six, verses one and two, chapter six, verses one and two, uh, breaking the first seal. Okay, uh, let us read that those verses, chapter six, verses one and two. Yes, Elsa, you are ready? Now I watched when the Lamb opened one of the seven seals, and I heard one of the four living creatures say with a voice like thunder, Come. And I looked, and behold, a white horse, and its rider had a, had a bow, and a, and a crown was given to him, and he came out conquering and to conquer. Okay. You know, when, when we study about breaking or opening the seals, or the seven seals, you, you let me let me let uh, uh, just remind you one thing that you know, think about you know what is happening when what is the meaning of opening or breaking the seals and uh, what is the meaning and what are the things that it, that is happening there this is the time of the tribulation period okay seven years of tribulation period that we already studied uh, in the previous class so in 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 those days in those days what is happening god is sending his judgment and punishment upon the worldly people. So when one seal is open, then we can understand what are the things are happening in that particular time, in that particular period. Okay, see, what are things are visible there when the first seal was opened? Okay, can anyone say, what are the things are visible there when the first seal was opened from these verses? Who can say? From verses one and two. What is that? Then I saw when the lamb broke one of the seven seals and then, then, and heard 
Ah, one of the living creatures saying, as with the voice of thunder, come. Then the second verse, which are those things? There is a white horse, right? There's a bow. Pastor is stuck again. Uh, okay, so there's a white horse, there's a bow, there's a crown, and he went out conquering and to conquer. One second. Okay. Uh, is it okay now? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, listen. So white horse is there. Then one sitting on the horse had a bow. A crown is there. Okay. And the person who is sitting on the white horse that that person went out conquering and to conquer and to conquer. Okay. So all of a sudden, when we when we read about the white horse and one sitting on the horse had a bow and a crown was given to him, that person, and he went out conquering and to conquer. You know, when you when you hear or when you read that portion, all of a sudden we may think that this is Jesus the conqueror, right? This is Jesus the conqueror because Jesus is coming on a white horse and Jesus is coming and sitting on a, on a, on a white horse with a bow and with a crown and uh, uh, Jesus is conquering and he came to conquer. So that is Jesus. No? But in fact, this verse is not a description about Jesus Christ. Rather, this is the description about Antichrist. Okay, we will. I, I will. I will give you the the uh, evidences for that, and we will prove that. You know, this is not talking, or this is the, <clears throat> not the description about Jesus Christ. Rather, this is the description about the Antichrist. And we will have to read some of the Old Testament, especially prophetical books portions, in order to understand that uh, this verse is speaking about uh, the Antichrist. Okay, so now. Uh, for today's class, we'll be mentioning many, many of the uh, Old Testament uh, uh, verses, and also we'll be uh, talking about the Antichrist, okay? So let us go to Daniel chapter 9, verses 26 and 27. Daniel chapter 9, verses 26 and 27. Yes, Elsa, you can read. And after, Daniel 9, 26 and 27. Yeah. And after 62 weeks, an anointed one shall be cut off and shall be, have nothing. And the people of the prince who is to come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. It, it, its end shall come with the flood, and to end there shall be a war. Desolations are decreed. And he shall make a strong covenant with many for one week. And for half of the week, he shall put an end to sacrifice and offering. And on the wing of abominations shall come one who makes desolate until the decreed end is poured out on the desolator. Okay, so uh, here we read about uh, the, the, the uh, kind of, you know, all of a sudden you will not understand that this is the Antichrist, but uh, when we refer with other references from the Old Testament and the New Testament, we will understand that uh, uh, these verses are speaking about uh, Antichrist. Now, we read about a prince of destruction here who is to come. Okay. So, in this particular verse, Daniel chapter 9, verses 26 and 27, we read about a prince of destruction. Okay. Prince of uh, destruction in Malayalam, uh, uh, that is Nasha uh, Yogan. Nasha Tinde. Yeah. Nasha Tinde. Yeah, Nasha Toda Vanda Patal, destruction order Vanda Patula, Urkarimana, Avada Edirikin, who is to come. So he is not here now, but he is, he is to come. That is the Antichrist. Okay. So uh, especially in this particular uh, verse and in Book of Revelation chapter six also, we read about a white horse. Okay. And there is a bow and there is a crown. And the white horse, bow, and the crown represents, represents the peace and the war and the victory, 
face was to happen as the anti so this is going to happen he will uh, antichrist will yeah antichrist will make a covenant with israel Antichrist will make a covenant with Israel to protect them and will predict like a peacemaker. <clears throat> okay, so all of a sudden, when Antichrist become the ruler of the world, one world, then uh, in the beginning, uh, Antichrist will make a covenant with Israel very peacefully, and that three and a half years will be a peaceful ruling peaceful reign and that will be a covenant for protect them and antichrist will say okay i will protect you and i will keep you no problem nothing will happen for you i will take care of you and i will keep you that will be the the promise and covenant with the people of israel which is given by antichrist okay that's what we read in these portions you know and that will be a prediction that uh, uh, just pretending that uh, pretending that uh, he is a peacemaker Okay, the, the people of Israel will think, okay, oh, this Antichrist is the, is the peacemaker and he will rule us and he will reign us. But at the, at the middle of the seven years, at the middle of the seven years, he will try to torture the people. He will try to torture the people. Then the people will realize that this is Antichrist. In the beginning, the people of Israel and the, the, the other people in the other nations, they will not understand, they will not realize this is the Antichrist. Rather, they will be thinking, okay, this is maybe the Messiah, or this is maybe the political leader who has come to uh, protect every one of us and to, to care for every one of us uh, uh, equally. But after the half, uh, half time, that means the middle of the seven years, at the middle of the seven years, he will try to torture the people. He will try to uh, persecute the people uh, then the people will realize that, oh, it was, it was Antichrist. You know, in Daniel chapter 9, verse 27, and also chapter 8, verses 23 to 25. Okay, already we read uh, 9, 27. Now we will read 8, 23 to 27. Then it will be more clear about uh, uh, what is going to happen during the time of the rule or the reign of uh, Antichrist in the uh, Great Tribulation period. Let us read chapter 8, Daniel chapter 8, verses 23 to 25. 23 to 25 or 23 to 27? Chapter 8, verses 23 to 25. Okay. And at the latter end of their kingdom, when the transgressors had reached their limit, a king of bold face, one who understands riddles, shall arise. His power shall be great, but not by his own power, and he shall cause fearful destruction and shall succeed in what he does and destroy mighty men and the people who are the saints. By his cunning, he shall make deceit prosper under his hand, and in his own mind, he shall become great. Without warning, he shall destroy many, and he shall even rise up against the prince of princes and he shall be broken but by no human hand it is very clearly speaking there are there are clear explanations about the antichrist here in this particular <clears throat> verses of chapter 8 okay this is this speaks about the antichrist you know when he become uh, the king uh, uh, he will make a firm and peaceful uh, covenant uh, uh, with uh, the people of israel and with uh, all the other nations but in the midst of the week, that means after three and a half years, uh, why you know you you know that why we are uh, saying that the week 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 because we already discussed about those things uh, the the seventy weeks or something in the previous class. So I'm not going to uh, look into that portion, but we, we will come back to that portion maybe later. So after the three and a half years. He will change his attitude and he will rule very rudely and will destroy the city and the sanctuary. That's what we read in these particular verses. You know, uh, not only that, the, the, the crown 
which Antichrist wear in this particular uh, portion and his vision is a temporary crown. It's a temporary crown. Okay, so uh, just think about what is the speciality of the crown, which is uh, which is on the which is on the uh, head of uh, this uh, Antichrist. Okay, so Antichrist is sitting on the white horse. On the white horse, the white horse represents peace. At the same time, the white horse is there, and there is one person sitting on it, and that person is having a bow. It speaks about peace is there at the same time war is there okay and victory is there okay so think about what is the speciality of this crown of this antichrist here mentioned in uh, uh, in revelation chapter 6 verse 2 you know the greek word which is used for this crown is is stephanas stephanas okay stephanas means the temporary crown stephanas means the temporary crown Okay, so the crown of Antichrist is a temporary crown for seven years. For example, I told you the crown always speaks about the victory of a person. Crown always speaks about the victory of a person. If then, you know, this Stephanas, the Stephanas, the word, Greek word, which is used to Stephanas is for the temporary crown. So the crown of Antichrist will be a temporary crown for only for seven years and even that crown and that uh what is that victory is given by god himself okay god has given that victory for satan for antichrist for seven years that's a temporary okay then after that he doesn't have any rule over the people okay god will take care of all those things okay. for the seven years antichrist will be ruling over the over the world okay but the Greek word which is used for the crown of Jesus in Revelation chapter 19, verse 12. Read Revelation chapter 19, verse 12. His eyes are like a flame of fire, and on his head are many diadems, and he has written, and he has a name written that no one knows but himself. On his crown, okay, on his head there are many diadems. Okay, the Greek word which is used for the crown of Jesus is diadema, diadema. Okay, Greek word. Okay, so we understand that the the um, the crown of Jesus Christ is the permanent crown, right? The permanent crown, but the crown of uh, Satan or the crown of Antichrist or the victory of Antichrist will be just temporarily, only for the seven years. I mean, so we have Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ is the conqueror, but Satan is having only only a temporary crown to, to punish or to, to use them. And God is using Satan. God is using Antichrist to, to torture the people, those who were unbelieving. Okay, again, you know, uh, when you read Bible, uh, we understand there are some, some other names also given for Antichrist. There are some other names which is given for Antichrist. We will just read out those portions, then we will move on. Okay, the first one is, man of sin <clears throat> the other names which is given for uh, uh, for antichrist okay the first one is man of sin or lawless one man of sin or lawless one uh, which is mentioned in second thessalonians chapter 2 verse 3 second thessalonians chapter 2 verse 3 let us read that verse let no one deceive you in any way, for that day will not come unless the rebellion comes first, and the man of the law lawlessness is revealed, the son of destruction. So what is that? Adharma Murti. Adharma Murti, man of sin or lawless one. Okay, so that is the one of the name of Antichrist. And the second one is abomination that causes desolation. Abomination that causes desolation. Okay, let us read Matthew chapter 24, verse 15. Matthew chapter 24, verse 15. So when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of the prophet Daniel standing in the holy place, let the reader understand. What is that? Shunya makuna mlechada. Abomination that causes desolation. Shunya makuna mlechada. So these things will happen when antichrist will rule over this world okay the abomination will be there okay the sin will be there 
okay, in the peak of the situation, okay, and, and that causes dissolution, okay, mlechada will be there, okay, and shunyada will be there. All, all these things are going to happen during the time of the Great Tribulation while Antichrist, I mean, will be ruling over the world, okay. And the next name which is given for Antichrist is the beast of the sea, the beast of the sea that is in Revelation chapter 13, uh, verse 1. Revelation chapter 13, verse 1. And I saw a beast rising out of the sea with ten horns and seven heads, with ten, with ten diadems on its horns and blasphemous names on its head, heads. when we come to the uh, chapter chapter 13 okay and the next name which is given for this person is antichrist antichrist so that is in first john chapter 4 verse 3 first john chapter 4 verse 3 and every spirit that does not confess jesus is not from god this is the spirit of the antichrist which you heard was coming and now is in the world already so Again, here, here it is mentioned that the name of this person is Antichrist, okay? So I was just thinking uh, last, maybe last two, two weeks, nobody is asking any question for, to me and nobody is texting me any questions. I think you, you understand everything, okay? Everything is clear for you. You are not having any question or any clarification about any, any, any of the topics. So thank God for that. And if you have any doubt or if you have any uh, questions or clarification about all these these portions, you can just text to me and uh, I'll try to give you the answer in the next class. Okay, okay, come back. You know, in Second Thessalonians chapter two verse four, in Second Thessalonians chapter two verse four, again we read about I mean, what is a, what is the Antichrist going to do during the time? Okay, it says that Antichrist will oppose. Okay, Antichrist will oppose. Read that verse. Second Thessalonians chapter two verse four. Who opposes and exalts himself against ever so-called God or object of worship, so that he takes his seat in the temple of God, proclaiming himself to be God. What is that? He will oppose and he will exalt himself over everything that is called God or is worshipped, so that he sets himself up in God's temple, proclaiming himself to be God. Okay, so taking some position, this person is going to take some of the positions. That means he will say that I am above all the religions. He will not give any importance for the religions, but he will say there is no religion. I mean, I am the only one person that you have to worship me. So Antichrist will proclaim that he himself will be the God. Right? It is clearly written in this particular verse. Okay, So we have to understand that that is going to happen in the great tribulation period. So let us pray that, O oh Lord, take me, from, take me from this wretched world before the great tribulation. Amen? So that should be our prayer. So, you know, in this, uh, uh, in this study, we have to understand something that uh, in the initial stage of the tribulation period, the initial stage of the tribulation period, uh, Antichrist will uh, get hold of all the other nations and they all will accept him as a world ruler and uh, they will stand with Antichrist. Listen very carefully. So what is going to happen during the time of the Great Tribulation, maybe in, it, in the initial stage of the Tribulation period, Antichrist will get hold of all other nations. Okay, He will connect with all other nations and they all will accept this man, this person. And the whole world will be ruled and reigned by this one person, Antichrist. And these all nations will stand with Antichrist. Then Antichrist will become the hero of all the nations. Antichrist will become the hero of all the nations. And all other countries of the world will, will be subjected to Antichrist during that rule. If, if anybody is opposing Antichrist, they will be persecuted. This is going to happen. Okay, so during the time of the rule of Antichrist, 
the antichrist will proclaim something and antichrist will give bring some some of the rules and regulations and everyone in the world will be subjected to for that rule and regulations and everyone should obey the antichrist if somebody is opposing and rejecting the order of antichrist they will have the horrible time and they will get many persecutions and many of them will be dying and many of them will be tortured okay so what is going to happen uh, at the at the right at the, the right in the in the middle of the seven years antichrist will start to persecute the people of god he will start to persecute the people of god okay uh, especially when you read uh, daniel chapter 9 21 and 25 we are not going to we are not going to read that portions because the chapters by chapters maybe daniel chapter 9 21 and 25 all these portions we understand a right in the middle of the seven years antichrist will change his attitude and he will okay in in the beginning in the in the initial stage of the rule everything will be peacefully running so he will be a peacemaker at the same time at the middle of the seven years he will start to persecute the people of god that's what we read in this in this chapter that means he will he will speak blasphemy against god he will speak blasphemy against god okay that is what we read in daniel chapter 7 uh, uh, 8 then revelation chapter 13 verse 6 revelation chapter 13 verse 6 all these verses and these portions speaks about uh, he the antichrist will be speaking blasphemy against the living almighty god okay and even antichrist will perform signs and miracles and he will try to imitate jesus as jesus did on the earth you know as we that that's what we read in thessalonians second thessalonians chapter 2 verses 9 to 12 what is going to happen antichrist will perform the signs and he will perform the miracle and he will try to imitate jesus did on this earth you know we call jesus and we call antichrist christ and antichrist okay the person who is op opposite to christ is called antichrist even today also you know in 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 those verses we already read that there are some antichrist now there is a meaning for that you know there are some antichrists already that means the particular person particular antichrist is going to come only in the during the time of the uh, great tribulation but at the same time nowadays the spirit of the antichrist is spreading everywhere the spirit of the antichrist is spreading everywhere okay the destruction and the sin the abomination and everything is happening you know all the worldly pleasures are happening even the believers also are mingling with the world okay we have to understand one thing you know this is a trap of uh, satan this is a trap of the satan this is a scheme of the satan you know many of the believers are trapped many of the believers are falsely thinking okay this is the sign and this is the miracle which is done by jesus no it is that may not be done by jesus you know many of the believers and many of the servants of god they are falsely doing something and they are doing with the power of the antichrist and the satan you have to think about all those things you know every miracles are not done by jesus every miracles are not done by jesus there are many things happening around the world okay we should be very careful about all these miracles and signs and the worldly pressures i mean so we have to take a decision that you know when the 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 when some of the believers and some of the godly people are just running after the worldly pleasures you can take a decision that you will not go for that because because our lord jesus return is at hand and we have to be ready for that i mean so this antichrist during those days and even this days also performing some miracles performing some signs and wonders Okay. And this Antichrist is trying to imitate Jesus. When Jesus was on this earth, Jesus did the signs. Jesus did the miracles. Okay. And the Antichrist also will be trying and pretending that he is the Messiah and he is the ruler and he is the political leader and he is the uh, deliverer of the people of Israel and all the nations. Okay. You know, 
uh, a few days ago, uh, one pastor was saying, nowadays, some preachers are focusing on some specific persons or some political leaders and saying that this person must be the antichrist. Okay, they are focusing some people, some, some particular person and saying that, okay, uh, Jesus Christ, uh, uh, sorry, antichrist, this, this person will be the antichrist. You know, for example, when um, I was thinking Narendra Modi, uh, and Narendra Modi, he became the prime minister of India. Uh, uh, you know, he was, he was trying to visit almost all the countries of the world, right? He was visiting okay, one country to another country. Every day he is in tour. Okay, you know, uh, and uh, he was trying to make some alliance with uh, uh, all the, the nations, okay? You know, somebody said he will be the Antichrist. <laughs> huh? I heard that. I, I heard somebody preaching, oh, Modi. the other name Pastor, we lost you again. Sorry. Now? Yeah, you can. can you hear? Yeah. Okay. Listen. So, and, and, and again, and again, you know, uh, some people were saying, okay, uh, when, when Obama became the president of America, somebody said, okay, Obama will be that person. And the Trump came and they said, Trump will be the person uh, and some other, other famous leaders will be the, the Antichrist. But, you know, don't believe in all those things, okay? That is not believable because, you know, when, when we read Bible, we have to get some of the ideas who will be the Antichrist, okay? So uh, all of a sudden I cannot say that, okay, who will be the Antichrist, but we have some clues in the Bible that speaks about who will be that person and from that which area, from, from which country that person will be coming. But we cannot decide anything. We cannot conclude anything that this person will be the Antichrist. Leave it. No problem. That is not our matter. You know? Whoever it may be, whoever it may be. I mean, the Antichrist, we believe we won't be here on the earth during his role or his persecution. Okay? We, the believers, will be with Jesus in heaven. Can you lift your hands and praise the Lord for that? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. You believe that? You believe that? I mean, we won't be here on this earth during the rule of and persecution of Antichrist. We will be and we believers will be with Jesus Christ in heaven. Hallelujah. And now let me tell you one thing. We are not waiting for the appearance of Antichrist, right? We are not waiting for the appearance of Antichrist, but we are waiting for the return of Jesus Christ. Amen. We are waiting for the return of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And now, and, and, and thus far, we, we have been studying about the first seal. Okay. Then when Jesus, the Lamb of God, was breaking or opening the first seal, all these things are going to happen. All these things are going to happen. Okay. Peaceful rule will be there. Then after the three and a half years, he will, Antichrist will change his attitude and he will start to torture the people, persecute the people. That is going to happen in the initial stage, okay? So this is what we understand from the opening or breaking the first seal of that scroll. Now, let us, let us study about breaking the second seal and what happens when the second seal was opened by the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ. The second seal. Uh, we read about the second seal from... <clears throat> chapter 6 verses 3 and 4 chapter 6 verses 3 and 4 speaks about what is the second seal and how uh, Jesus was opening or breaking that seal and what happened during the time of breaking the second seal okay so I, I know that you are you are writing down these points take down these points and I'll explain that Okay, listen, 
So when the first seal was opened, John saw, Apostle John saw a white horse, right? When Jesus opened the first seal, Apostle John was watching a white horse. But when the second seal is opened, he saw... okay yeah okay um no i don't know some some problem with my wi-fi or internet or something okay um okay what was that the first one the first horse is the white horse and the second one is the red horse red horse and to him who sat on it was granted to take away the peace from the earth. Take away the peace from the earth. And a great sword also was given to him. And a great sword also was given to him. You know, when you think about these things, the white color, red color, yellow color, and black color, all those things, you know, different colors of horses reveal the various nature of God's punishment. Okay, so every time God's punishment would not be same, there will be variations. Okay, so in order to in order to reveal, in order to tell us that these are the these are the differences of the nature of the uh, punishment of God, God is revealing to Apostle John that there are some different colors of horses. Okay, that reveals the various nature of God's punishment on the worldly people during the time of the great persecution or during the time of the great tribulation. You know, here the color red is associated with terror, war, and death. You got it, right? You know, here the color is the red color, the red horse is there. That is always associated with terror, war, and death. But the color white represents for Peace, the color white always represents for peace. Okay, especially to him who sat on the red horse was given mainly two types of authorities, mainly two types of authorities. What was that? The first authority which was given for that person who was sitting <coughs> on the red horse was to take away the peace from the earth so that they would kill one another. Listen very carefully. The first authority, the first authority to, is given for the, for, the, for, the, for the Antichrist by God is take away the peace from the earth. That means if, God, if Antichrist is taking away the peace from the earth, there will be war, there will be terror coming, and there will be death, and there will be many things happening. Okay, and it is written particularly there, they would kill one another. The people will kill one another. Okay, same from the same family. The fathers will kill their, their, their sons and daughters. Okay, husband will kill the wife and wife will kill the husband and the children will kill the parents and they will kill the neighbors, killing each other. That will happen during the time of the rule of Antichrist, during the time of the rule of great tribulation. And the second authority was given for the Antichrist. That is the great sword was given to kill many people. The great sword was given to kill many people. Okay, so when we think about, okay, the sword was given, the bow was there and uh, the crown was there. Don't think that, okay, maybe may not be it is physical. Okay, physically, literally giving some of the, some of the items, but take the spiritual meaning of that because uh, Apostle John is watching a vision. In vision, it is it is reflected. So he is thinking that okay, this will be the meaning of that. And we have to connect all these things with the other references of the Bible, even from the Old Testament and the New Testament. That's the reason that we are concluding in that way that this person was given a great sword to kill many people, which means there will be a lot of wars and battles and deaths happening by Antichrist with the permission of God. So God will give the permission to Antichrist to, to do these things. Okay, God will say, make some wars, make some battles, let many die, let the death happen, 
through the Antichrist. So God is giving this permission to Antichrist to do all these things because they did not believe in Jesus Christ. Because they rejected Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. When, so when, when, we, when we know that the first seal was opened, there was a there was cold war, right? There was a cold war. It was a cold war. Okay. But when the second seal was opened, there is a hot war. That means bloodshed happening. Very bloodshed is happening in the second seal when it was when, when it was opened. You know, in the in the in the following verses, maybe Mark chapter 13, verses 7 and 8, and Luke chapter 21, verses 9 and 10. Uh, when you read those portions, we will understand that Jesus was informing to the disciples while he was in the public ministry. He was just informing those people uh, uh, about all these things which would happen in the end time. Okay, when Jesus was doing his public ministry in this world, okay, 33 and a half years, okay, during those days, especially in, uh, in, in the gospels, Jesus was prophesying and informing disciples what is going to happen during the time of end time, end time. Okay, and he said, when you hear of war, when you hear about rebellion, don't be alarmed. Indeed, it is necessary that these things ta shall take place. It will take place first, but the end won't come right away. You, you go through that verses, then you will understand what is the meaning of uh, those words that Jesus said, Mark chapter 13, uh, verses seven and eight. Mark chapter 13, verses 7 and 8. And when you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. This must take place, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places. There will be famines. Th these are the these are but the beginning of the birth pains. One more verse, Luke chapter 21, verses nine and 10. Luke 21, verses nine and 10. And when you hear of wars and tumults, do not be terrified for these things must first take place, but and but the end will not be at once. Then he said to them, nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. What is that? Jesus said, when you hear of wars and rebellion, do not be terrified for these things must take place first, but the end does not follow immediately. Okay. So when you think about the end time, you know, the people are thinking, some of the people are thinking this 20, 20, 2020, or 2021 is the end time. No, it's not like that. You know, the end time already started just after the after the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. Okay, or in, in from from the beginning of the uh, I mean birthday of the church, the Christian church. Okay, so everything is happening from that day itself. Okay, from the first century itself, everything is happening. These all things are happening. Wars are there. Rubalini is there. Yet kicks are happening. Everything is happening every day, every day, every day in different countries and every nations. Okay. At the same time, it says particularly it says that it should happen first, but the end does not follow immediately. That means it will take time. It will take time for the second coming of Jesus Christ. And but we do not know when Jesus is coming, when Jesus is returning. It will take time to get into the great tribulation, but it will happen. It will happen one day. We do not know the right time, but it is going to happen. Okay, after the second coming of Jesus Christ and after, after the rapture of the church, the great tribulation period will start on this earth by Antichrist with the permission of God. But at the same time, let me conclude I mean, all these things with uh, with a with a word of prayer, and uh, I would like to uh, tell you one thing. Uh, this uh, I mean, uh, uh, this evening, as we were discussing about all these things about the great tribulation and antichrist, you know, uh, I would like to uh, give you minutes for uh, Brother Jason for 
uh, some of the important announcements for the Sunday. So uh, before that, we will pray and we will conclude uh, uh, the session here. You know, uh, just remember one thing, why we are studying from the book of Revelation, why we are studying about all these things and why we are studying about the great tribulation, why we are studying about the, about the Antichrist. There is a reason, there is a reason that we all must be away from the worldly pleasures and we must be ready and prepared for the return of Jesus Christ. I mean, that is the only one intention which is in my mind when I'm taking the classes for the book of Revelation. Hallelujah. So let us all submit ourselves in the mighty hand of God and let us take a decision that, oh Lord, 